What's up guys and welcome to Wall Street Millennial. On this channel, we make videos about stocks and investing. In this video, we're taking a look at recent developments in Elon Musk's space company SpaceX. On March 3rd, SpaceX's ship Starship Prototype No. 10 completed a successful vertical landing, but soon after landing, it exploded. In this video, we'll go over what this new development means for SpaceX and their future launches. It's important to track the Starship program because it is a program that will ultimately bring people to Mars and turn humanity into an interplanetary species. Once it is perfected, the Starship rocket ship will be able to ferry up to 100 people to Mars at a time. 100 people is potentially enough to set up a bare-bones and self-sustaining Mars colony that grows its own food and generates its own energy. Last year, Elon Musk said the first cargo mission to the Red Planet would take place in 2022. He is highly confident that the first human mission will happen in 2026, but could even be pulled forward to 2024 in the best case scenario. That's obviously very exciting if they can actually pull this off. We may have the beginnings of a Mars colony before Joe Biden leaves office. But is Elon being overly optimistic? And what does this most recent launch tell us about how realistic the timeline actually is? First, let's get into the launch itself. This is the Starship rocket Serial No. 10, or SN10. It is the 10th iteration of the Starship to date. The purpose of the launch is to test how high the rocket can go, and more importantly, how smoothly it can re-enter the atmosphere and land safely. Obviously, landing is of key importance to the Starship. For a successful Mars trip, you not only have to travel the 141 million mile distance to the planet, but also be able to safely land and take off again. The Starship lifted off by firing all three of its main booster rockets. It takes an incredible amount of energy to push such a massive spaceship off the ground. It's hard to get a sense of the scale looking at the video, but the Starship is a true behemoth. It stands at 122 meters, or 400 feet tall, which is roughly equivalent to a 28-story building and weighs upwards of 11 million pounds. But what's even more impressive than the liftoff itself is its maneuvering when it reaches the top of its intended altitude. Once the ship nears the top, it shuts off the three main booster rockets one at a time and turns on its smaller header rockets. This allows it to perform a belly flop movement, which shifts it to a horizontal position. Being in the horizontal position allows the spacecraft to be controlled with the four flaps on its sides. Now that it is in the proper horizontal position, it begins its descent back to the landing zone. While the video looks calm, it is actually traveling extremely fast as it is free-falling at terminal velocity. The vehicle peaked at 10 kilometers off the ground, and once it falls to an altitude of 1 kilometer, it begins another flip sequence to turn the rocket horizontal again and land on the landing pad. The Starship successfully landed without incident, but as you can see through the smoke, there is a fire burning at the base of the rocket. Despite the rocket engines being turned off, it appears that some of the jet fuel is still burning, which leaves the very vulnerable situation. The fire burns for a few minutes, and an unmanned firehouse starts spraying it with water. After a while, it appears the fire is put out and the situation has been resolved. But unfortunately, a few minutes later, the Starship explodes in spectacular fashion, as there are apparently still some flames burning inside. Fortunately, this was an unmanned test flight, and there were no humans on board. Shortly after the explosion, Elon Musk tweeted, Starship number 10 is in Valhalla now. So what does the explosion mean for the Starship program and the journey to put people on Mars? It shows that we're still a long way off for safe travel with human passengers. To put 100 people on a ship, you have to have an extremely high degree of confidence that the landing will be safe. But counterintuitively, this test flight of SN10 was not really a failure. The purpose of the test was to perform a soft landing and collect data. The rocket is still a prototype, and nobody expected it to be ready for human travel at this early of a stage. You have to remember that a rocket engine is basically a controlled explosion with the shell of a rocket. So the rocket basically has a giant bomb inside of it that has to be detonated in an extremely precise manner, and this is not an easy task to accomplish. It's literally rocket science. The fact that an early stage prototype rocket is liable to explosions should not come as a surprise. Elon Musk explained the inevitability of explosions on Joe Rogan's podcast earlier this year, shortly after the SN9 exploded. Time flies. How many times have you had explosions <laughs> with those When you're things? on a rocket. Um, I don't know, like uh, quite a few. Six, maybe five or six. What are those like? What is it like when you watch it explode? When it's supposed to land, and it just no. We, this this is a test program. Right. Actually, we expect it to to, to explode. Of so course. I, um, it, it's weird if it doesn't explode. Frankly, really? Uh, yeah. Um, because we're you know, we're trying to develop advanced rockets uh, at a high at a high speed, and uh, if you want to get payload to orbit, uh, you you have to run things close to the edge. And um, the whole rocket is evolving. The engines, the structure, the avionics, the software, the ground systems are all evolving simultaneously. So, and, and the whole production system, which is actually harder than the rocket design by far. 
So the the, mm. rock, the the rocket and engine and avionics production system is and, and the and the launch system uh, is a thousand percent hotter than the initial design, like at least. Really? Yeah. So when same with car, cars, it's like ten thousand percent. It's easy to do a car prototype. It's hard to do production. Hmm. So when you're looking at you're scaling towards the future and you're looking at mistakes or uh, corrections, improvements, and all of these different things, that's how you come up with this figure of pr approximately two years. If current trends continue, uh, if, if we you know, if you if you plot the points on the curve of progress, then then we should be doing regular uh, orbital flights uh, with a high probability of uh, safe landing in two years. So we're, when, we're getting to orbit this year. Our goal is to get to orbit this year. Mm. So, and, and I'm not sure people totally understand, like it, Starship is the, the largest flying object ever made. Uh, the question is, how many more test flights will SpaceX have to do before they have confidence to actually put humans on board? And can they accomplish this by most aggressive target of humans on Mars by 2024? The SN10 was SpaceX's 10th test flight in the Starship, and the first test was less than two years ago. They have a very aggressive launch schedule, with new flights every few months. Importantly, the launches have a clear trend of becoming more successful each time as they collect more data and fine-tune the technology after each launch. The first few launches were very small and only went up a few hundred feet. This is the SN5 launch from August of 2020. It only used one of the engines and while it did successfully lift off and land, it was not particularly impressive because it was always moving relatively slowly and did not perform any complicated maneuvers. When you get up to altitudes of many kilometers and free fall down at terminal velocity, that is when things start to get interesting. They only started testing high altitude launches with skydive descent maneuvers in December of 2020 and tried it again in February. Both of these first two attempts resulted in the rocket immediately exploding on impact. So the fact that the SN10 successfully landed before the explosion is actually a huge improvement and allows them to collect more data on how to do a successful landing. In the coming months, SpaceX will attempt another. Using the learnings from SN10, SpaceX will continue to make improvements to the Starship design and the SN11 will be far superior to the SN10. It is highly likely that the next launch will have a successful landing and no explosion at all. Given how rapidly SpaceX has been making progress, Musk's 2024 target for reaching Mars actually seems possible. And with the Starship's capacity of 100,000 kilograms of cargo and 100 passengers, the colonization of Mars can actually happen pretty quickly. Each trip could bring a significant amount of materials for building solar farms, greenhouses, and other essential facilities for sustained human life and reproduction. As SpaceX's current rate of progress, this could easily happen within the next 10 years. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. What do you think about the SN10 test launch? When do you think humans will first step foot on Mars? Let us know in the comment section below. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, check out our second channel, WSM Research, where we post due diligence on innovative high-tech growth companies. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.